Welcome back to The Edge Show. Senator Ted Kennedy was one of the most effective deal makers in congressional history, but he wasn't always that adept. One of his greatest legislative regrets was refusing to cut a deal on health care with President Nixon back in 1971. At the time, Kennedy didn't want to compromise on a single-payer system. Stephen Perlstein of the Washington Post wrote a piece on this today, and he joins us now. Stephen, thanks for your time here. Interesting piece. What, uh, where did Kennedy feel like he went wrong at that particular moment in his legislative career? Well, um, Richard Nixon at the time uh, thought he might be running against Ted Kennedy in the 1972 presidential election, and he knew that Kennedy was coming out with a single-payer plan, which uh, he didn't like. So he uh, asked Casper Weinberger, who was then his Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, as we called it at the time, uh, to come up with a plan. And the funny thing is that the plan they came up with is remarkably similar to the one that Democrats are now talking about uh, in Washington, it involved requiring everyone to have uh, insurance, and it require and it would have the government help to subsidize that for those who uh, couldn't afford it. Wasn't it like uh, a 75, 25 percentage thing that they got into over this that they couldn't compromise on? Well, I don't really think it got down in the end of the day. I mean, they did back and forth. By the way, uh, Nixon proposed it. It went nowhere. The election was held. We know what happened there. Nixon won. It was after that that the deal-making really went on. There were secret talks between Kennedy and the White House, uh, and they got fairly far. And he had brought in, uh, Kennedy brought in Wilbur Mills, who was then the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. He was involved in it. And Mills actually got a, a compromise bill through the House. Then Mills himself got into problems with the sex scandal, and he sort of fell by the way. In the end of the day, though, it was Kennedy who pulled the plug uh, in large part because the labor unions, looking at the pro political problems that Richard Nixon was having, convinced him, with Watergate, convinced him that he should hold out for single payer, that Nixon would lose, the Republicans would lose, there'd be a Democratic president, a Democratic Congress, and they could finally get that single payer. And Kennedy listened to them, and he later came to regret that. Wasn't it President Nixon who was willing to go along? Along with Kennedy on the low income subsidies, which would have been a rather rare move for a conservative president. It, it was, and, and he, uh, although, you know, Richard Nixon sometimes gets a bad rap on that. Richard Nixon gave us the Environmental Protection Agency. He gave us a lot of domestic programs, which we now value quite a bit. Uh, but uh, he did agree. He was coming under pressure from the American Medical Association and from uh, the small business groups, uh, which did not want this. They felt that they would be pressured to provide health insurance, which, uh, which in fact, they're still saying today. And they're still opposed to what's called an employer mandate, even to this day. How much will the passionate, determined Kennedy voice be missed down the stretch, Stephen Perlstein, in this health care debate that we're going through right now in this country? Well, it'll be missed quite a bit, and it won't be just the passion that's missing. Ted Kennedy, over a long period of time, very long, developed a lot of cred with liberals. And so if Ted Kennedy went to liberals and said, you know what, we got to give up this to get that, they pretty much would go along with him. And there is nobody now who has that kind of credibility with liberals that can get them to make compromises that are going to be necessary to get this through. That That's really, a problem. Uh, that, Stephen, that really is the next story for the Democrats. Who is going to play that key role down the stretch that liberals will trust when the deal's got to be cut? I don't know who it will be, Ed, because there's no one that's obvious right now. Stephen Perlstein, thanks so much for joining us tonight.